How many of us are excited to learn today? Let me see a raise of hands. Raise your hand if you're excited to learn. Everybody's excited Ooh. to learn. Be excited. Yeah. Yeah, right. Too fast in. So how many of you are excited to fail? Raise your hand if you're excited to fail. I'm just as excited. Oh, I'm, I'm excited for that. Oh my God. Mm. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it's when you fail, it's when you learn the most. You cannot learn without failure. Can we go to the next slide? I just want to highlight what he just said. You learn the most when you fail. Mm -hmm. That was good. Can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Failure is an inevitable, inevitable part of life, right? If we're doing something that great, something that we're destined, if we're doing something great, we're destined to fail in that thing. But you cannot fear failing. You have to, you have to embrace it because that's like I said, that's when you learn the most. You cannot fear failure, fear not failing because if you don't fail at all, then you're not going to learn anything. It is possible to pick yourself up and rise again after failure. So even though I know a lot of times we fail, a lot of times we've fallen, and it feels like it's more comfortable to lie down, right? It feels like it's more comfortable to not move. It is possible to pick yourself up. It is possible to rise. It is possible to keep going forward. You know, I've been there where I failed so bad that I thought the best option would be just to stay there because it felt like a better option for myself. But I did not let myself do that. I picked myself up and I learned from it and I kept moving forward because if I let myself lie there and just be in the walls of failure, then that is the moment when I would have failed myself. Okay. You can start with these seven ways to help you get back after a major failure. However, you shouldn't let failure hold you back or keep you from going after your dreams. Obviously, we all want to be like Ken. I all want to be like Andy. We all want to be like Gio. We all want to be like Steve, Dre. We all want to be a partner, right? And we all see the life they live. But how many of us saw the failures they went through? How many of us want to go through the failures they went to to be where they are right now? You know, that's that's a dream we all have, right? Partnership. But are we all willing to go what they went through to be able to reach that ultimate destination? So dissect the situation and understand what went wrong. Understanding the reason why you failed is the first step to dealing with failure and getting back up. So if you fail and do not analyze why you failed, you're gonna keep failing the same way. No, we all talk about the definition of insanity, doing the same thing, expecting different results. You guys have to sit there and analyze you why you failed. You guys have to go through the pain and realize why you failed and fix it, learn from it and never do it again. And that's how you'll move forward. This failure might leave you feeling like an incompetent person who was never destined to be an entrepreneur. So that is absolute BS if you think about that, okay? So obviously, like I said, all of us have failed at some point, but we're all still here, right? We're all still wanna be entrepreneurs. Everyone failed at least one. Look at Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, he had no gas for his car. He had an eviction letter on his apartment door. He went in and he thought about everything and where his life was going, the direction he was heading in life. And he decided to change it at that moment. He decided to write down everything that was holding him back. He was he decided to write down all the failures he was going through. And he learned from it and pushed himself forward. Now we all know Tony Robbins is a great motivational speaker. You know, he motivated all of us. We all did the power uh, 48 hours a day, right? I mean, 24 hours a day or however long that was. But what I'm trying to say is that he learned from everything he was failing. And that is how ultimately he got to where he is. And even if he didn't feel like an entrepreneur at that moment, now he's, he owns how many companies? Over 50, I believe. Go back to the circumstances leading up to the failure and try to understand what exactly went wrong. So we have to go back to the failure, but we have to go back even before that. We have to go back to all the little failures we had leading to the major failure. Because if you do one big failure, a big mistake, there was a little set of mistakes that ultimately led you to that. So you have to analyze each and every one and learn from each and every one of them. Because if you don't, like I said, you're gonna repeat all those little mistakes and it's gonna ultimately lead to the big one. Yeah, you can fix a big failure, but if you don't fix the little ones, you can repeat all of them again. Forgive yourself. Therefore, after you have identified the mistake that led to a failure, remind yourself that you are not perfect and forgive yourself for making the mistake, right? I like talking about this one, like if you have a baby and they're learning how to walk and they fall, are you gonna be like, you're stupid baby. You're weak, grow stronger legs walk faster just start walking already right you're not gonna be like come on why'd you fall you're gonna be like yeah you know you're trying you're learning you guys praise the baby 
for falling. You guys praise the baby for taking its first steps, even though the baby fell. So we cannot be that harsh on ourselves. We cannot be like, oh, we're stupid. Why did we fail? Why did we do this? Right, Ken? We baby, don't be a baby. Just grow up already. An adult. Gosh. Do your responsibility. Oh, with his kids, man. <laughs> <laughs> right? But we can't, we can't be that harsh on ourselves, guys. We got to learn that failure is a process of life. And we have to learn how to forgive ourselves for making, for failing. We got to learn to how to forgive ourselves for making mistakes. Because if we keep pushing ourselves down because we failed, we won't be able to, how do I say, we won't be able to learn from it because we're just going to feel bad about it. And we're just going to, you know, we're not going to want to live it. We're not going to want to embrace it. So you guys have to forgive yourself for failures. When we make a mistake, instead of forgiving ourselves like we would have forgiven others, we define ourselves by our mistake. So this is a big one, right? If you make a mistake, you now define yourself by that one mistake. If you say you're a failure, you now de define yourself as a failure. Any little mistake it is, but that will not define your entire life. You cannot let one mistake define your entire life. You gotta let the actions that you take after you make the mistake. You gotta let where the destination is after you make the mistake define your life. If you do good things after you fail to learn from it, let that identify who you are. See what you can learn from your failure. See what lessons you can learn from your failure will prevent you from making the same mistakes again in the future, which will increase your chances of success and similar endeavors in the future. So this one, I want to ask a partner. So I want to ask Andy, right? So I know, obviously you're where you are right now, but I know you felt a lot of, like you felt a lot to get where you are right now. But I just want, I want to ask you how did you analyze yourself? Because I know one of my biggest problems of self-analyzing, and I know a lot of our problems are self-analyzing. We always have to get their point of view. But I want to ask you how you learn to analyze yourself to not make the same mistakes. Yeah, I think the first time, well, analyzing it is, it's, it's tough, right? Like when I first started in this business, I, I didn't really know how to self-analyze myself. I didn't know what to look for. So I would ask people around me, like, how am I doing? So if it was a pitch, right? I'm going to a business and I'm pitching for the first time. I will ask whoever's training me, you know, what do you think about my pitch? And then after he gave me or she gave me feedback on what they were looking for, now I can self analyze myself and critique myself of what I could have done better. But in the very beginning in sales, something I knew nothing about, I would ask the people around me who were successful on what they were looking for. And then I would use that as a way for me to self analyze moving forward. So that's what I did, Jeff. Thanks, Andy. So one thing I want to point out that he said he did is he asked other people where he failed, right? When you learn how you felt, if it's from a third point of view, you're ultimately going to know how to self analyze yourself. Because if you felt, if that's the first time you felt that way, you're not going to know how to fix it because it's your first time being there. But that's why we have all these people in stuff. And we got Andy, we got Ken, we got Steve, and they'll know where we went wrong. So getting a third point of view will definitely help you learn how to self analyze later. Thank you, Andy. Appreciate it. Aside from preventing you from repeating the same mistakes, see your failure as a learning opportunity shifts your mindset. So whenever we fail and we look at it as a failure, we automatically stigmatize it as a negative thing because in school, as we were growing up, we were always taught to not fail. Failure is a bad thing. You can never fail. Always do good. Always do great. You know, no matter what you were going through, you cannot fail. Failure was not a choice or option in school, right? But if you shift it, if you shift your mindset now to a learning opportunity, you're going to start seeing every failure as something you learn from. You're going to start seeing it as a learning opportunity and you're going to be like, okay, you know, it's okay to fail because I learned. I'm growing now. You guys have to put yourself in that mindset so you guys can learn the most. You guys learn how to grow the most. Figure out what failure is trying to tell you. You can turn it into a learning opportunity. So like I said, you know, what is failure trying to tell us? Maybe it's trying to tell us that we weren't prepared enough. Maybe it's trying to tell us that we didn't work territory correctly. I'm relating this to going out in the field. You know, if we're not prepared, obviously we're going to be driving around all day, right? And we roll a zero and go home. If we're not working territory correctly, we're skipping businesses. And, you know, maybe that business just skipped, could have been a deal. And then you go home only with zero, you know, you got to learn from that. You got to see what failure is trying to tell you. Maybe you're not working the seven habits correctly. Maybe you're not preparing. If you're running a call and you like fumble it a lot, maybe you did not prepare for the call and now you have to learn to prepare. So what is failure trying to tell you? Focus on your strengths. 
you still have your key strengths and things you're good at. And by focusing on these strengths, you can chart a path to move you forward from failure. All right, Jairus, I want to ask you this one, right? So I know you felt, but I know you are very down to earth and I know you're a very humble man. And I know you have a lot of good qualities coming up to you. How do you use your strengths to overcome failure? Yeah, so you got to focus on the right things, in my opinion. Um, a lot of times, you know, I, I learned that in life is there's a lot of mental lessons that, that you that that's what really gets us. It's not it's not pitching. It's not the work. It's not, you know, uh, the, the mechanical part of the business, but it's a lot of the, men, the mental aspect. So for me, um, what I was what I was basically saying is I try to keep a good attitude because I'm a happy person. Um, I'm a peaceful person. So those are things that I've been working on for years and years, you know, so whenever that's offset, then I kind of understand, OK, this is offset. But like so in the business, I, even if a customer, you know, give you, you know, you know, bad vibes, you know, to get out, you know, I don't you know, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, whatever you was about to do the deal and they just change their mind on you just like that. Um, it's like a quick mental shift uh, that you make. And I, I guess the best example I give is like, let's say you everybody want to hit that snooze button. You know, you, you're tired, you're trying to wake up, you want to hit that snooze button. But if your apartment was on fire, then you would have to mentally shift and say, oh, shoot, I'm about to die. So I literally need to get up. You know, I, I need, I have to, I have to get up. So even though your apartment is really not on fire, there's a mental shift in your brain where you say, you know what, I'm a, I'm a peaceful person, you know, so this is, this is not my character. Or if, if I, if, if for me, like I, I like being a certain weight, if I'm gaining weight, I'm like, this is not like me. This is not my character, you know? So it kind of transitions to any area that you can put it at. So if I'm failing, I got to say, I'm, I'm not a failure. You know, I have greatness inside of me. So, you know, this is this is not congruent to how I feel about myself. This is not congruent to what the facts are. And then you make that shift, you know, so I hope that helps. Thanks, Jairus. But one thing I want to point out is that he, he's not a failure. That's number one, you know. But I want to point out how you said the mental shifts are what help him out. Because like I said, Jairus has a lot of, um, like down to earth on his humble. But whenever he has something, for example, like hitting the snooze button, right? Versus the apartment on fire, you gotta learn how to shift your mindset. And that's his strength to overcome failure. He learns how to shift the mindset to it not being a failure, but it not being something that he's congruent with, therefore he's gonna fix it immediately. So we all have to learn how to focus on what we're, whatever we're failing on and shift our mindset to be able to fix the problem immediately. Next slide, please. Get support and inspiration from trusted people. Talking to someone you trust allows you to get things off your chest and get rid of negative emotions that come with the future. So I know Andy touched on this a little bit earlier too when he said, you know, when he was learning out and then he would ask other people to see what's doing wrong. But I can also touch on this, you know, I call Steve 24 seven. Like I bought his phone, I blew up his phone, right? But the reason I do that is because if there's anything negative that comes with anything I told in, he knows how to help me overcome it. He knows how to help me analyze everything I'm doing and guide me through my mistakes. You know, I think of, like whenever I think it's not okay, you know, he helped me analyze it and be like, okay, you know, it's okay that I made it because I won't make it in the future when it would have a greater impact. It's okay to make it now because it's not gonna have as big of an impact and I get to learn from it and never repeat it again. Therefore, it is a lot easier for them to spot something you might have missed or to identify a mistake that might have led you to your failures since they're not affected by personal bias. So like I was saying, you know, many mistakes I cannot spot myself, especially as I'm growing. There's a lot of mistakes. I obviously they, I'm making them because it's my first time making them and I can't spot it myself. Right. So what I do is, you know, I get third point of view. I call, I call Steve, I call Isaiah, I call Edgar, I call everyone. Like, hey, you know, what did I do wrong? What did I do so I can fix it and move forward. So. So that's what I do. Next slide, please. Come up with the best plan you can. Make sure you've incorporated the lessons learned from your failure and start taking action to get back. So whenever you fail, obviously you cannot get back. You cannot just, after you analyze it, you cannot get back to where you were taking action. You have to literally sit down and plan what you're going to do after you fail. 
you have to sit down and plan and see where you're going to go, see your path ahead after you fell. So if you just analyze it and learn from it, but then you do nothing with it, you're not going to be able to move forward again. You're going to have to literally make an action plan and see, okay, what can I do now? What am I going to do now? You know, how am I going to move forward? This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to benefit from it. And that's how you move forward. If you already identified your strengths and came up with a plan on how to capitalize on these strengths to move forward, now is the time to put the plan on action, right? So like I was saying, once you identify it, you got to move forward, but you got to use your strengths as well. Like Jairus was saying, you know, his mental shifts are one of the strengths, so he used that to put himself into action. You got to find your strength. You got to really analyze, analyze what it is and set it in action, and that's how you're going to put it into action. Next slide, please. Believing in yourself and keep dreaming big. Before this one failure, you had several other wins and accomplishments. And even though you've experienced failure, you're still the same person who achieved all those previous wins. And you still have the talent, knowledge, and skills that helped you achieve them. So when you fail, guys, it's not the end of the world, you know? It's been, it might feel like it completely changed you as a person, but I promise you, you're still the same person if, for example, if, have you guys seen Pursuit of Happiness? It's based on Chris Gardner, you know? It goes through, it's a, it's a good movie, you guys should watch it. But there's a scene, you know, where he's in the restroom and he has nowhere to sleep. It, there's a lot of failures he went into his life, but it didn't change the person he was. He had that work ethic, he had those dreams that he kept pushing forward. And at the end of it, even if we fail, even if we feel like we can, but we still have that work ethic inside of us. We still have the heart and character inside of us. It's just that little mental shift that came along with it that made us think that we're not who we used to be. You know, like we think like we're a failure now. But if you keep pushing forward, keep dreaming big, you're gonna realize the more you overcome the failure and the more you learn and the more you push forward, you're still the same person at the end of it. You're still the same person you were before the failure. But you, you have to learn how to not let a failure identify who you are at the moment. You cannot let it think, you cannot let it put it in your mindset that you're a different person because you failed. You have to learn how to overcome it and you guys gotta keep dreaming big. You kind of cannot ever let your dreams go because you failed one time, you know. Once you stop dreaming, once you stop believing in yourself, and once you let yourself fail and never get back up, that is when you ultimately failed you. But if you guys never push forward, if you guys never think you're still the same person, if you guys don't keep with the work ethic, keep with the heart and character after, you know, you're gonna end up giving up on your dreams. And no one should ever give up on your dreams. But that's all I have for you guys. Let's go.